Welcome back guys and girls. Uh, before we go into what happens when this startup goes into its series A, I first want to talk to you about what rounds are in the first place. So whenever a startup raises one round of funding, they typically go on to raise further rounds of funding. The first stage of funding for a startup is usually called the seed round, which is some, some startups obviously have something called a pre-seed round, which basically is a smaller amount of money. This is typically raised from angels or you know friends and family. And some people also call this an angel round. In my opinion, there's not too much of a difference between these three types of rounds. So whether you're raising a seed or an angel, it, it kind of is the same thing. Then you follow up with the startup's first formal round of funding, which is a series A. Now, this is followed up by a series B and so on and so forth. What typically happens is during the seed rounds or the angel rounds of a startup, the startup is looking for something called product market fit, which is will the market pay for my product? Whereas with series B and you know onwards till whatever letter of the alphabet, you know, the startup is able to raise funding till this is more about expansion and scale which is I already know the market will pay for this. I've kind of proved this in my early stage rounds. Now I'm just trying to reach out to more people, hire some more people, you know, amp up the marketing and so on and so forth. This is expansion and scale. So today we're going to be visiting what happens when the startup gets to its first formal round of funding, which is the series A. Now a lot of startups don't know what the metrics are that they need to kind of show a seed or series A or an angel investor. And you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of hearsay about this. Um, also, people just don't know where to find these investors, although you can just do a quick search of, you know, what are the top active angel investors. There are a lot of angel investors who are still active despite, you know, not being on any of these articles. So what I've done for you guys is the metrics, which is, you know, the amount of revenue, the kind of employee size, the kind of product market fit metrics that you need. Um, I've put a document on it. It's, it's in the Meta Startup Facebook group. So go join the Meta Startup Facebook group if you haven't already. Uh, I will be showing you exactly what are the metrics it takes to raise any of these rounds up to a Series C. After a Series C, it's really case by case. So up till a Series B, they're fairly standard. So I put those numbers up both in the United States as well as in India. And I've also put a list of 100 top Series A, Series B, Series C VCs and the list of the top active angel investors in India. So I put all of this on the Meta Startup Facebook group. Go join it. It's completely free. Uh, the only tax to kind of join this group is you need to add at least one friend who is interested in startups and interested in learning more. This friend might be considering doing an MBA or whatever. Stop him or her and tell them, you know, maybe you should give this series a shot and try to run a startup on your own before considering going to business school. Now let's go back to our startup, right? So, you know, now we have the assets, which could be a bunch of things. Let's, let's say the idea. We used to have that million dollars in capital. So sorry, not a million, a crore in capital. Let's, let's call this one CR. Now, maybe we're running out of this money, right? Maybe we spent on, you know, hiring a few people. We, you know, made the website a little better. We got a few early customers. So the idea and the skills are now joined by some more tangible things, which are customers which are early revenues, you know, maybe some key partnerships or whatever. So a bunch of different things now add to your valuation. So you go to the new and, and I'm just going to draw the cap table right now. So we have whatever, you know, co-founder one. So we have, you know, angel one, we have co-founder one and we have co-founder two, right? All of this is kind of, I mean, we know that, these people have a certain amount of equity. This person has 9.09. .09. Uh, these people have the rest, which is, you know, 100 minus 9.09. .09. Um, and now these people go to a institutional VC to raise capital. Now, I want to mention at this point that this one crore of capital will not last you very long. A lot of people think a crore is a lot of money, but when it comes to running a company, this will run out very, very, very quickly. So the first time startup founders who are running a digital business, Always raise as much as you can because you don't want to keep going back to VCs again and again. The process of fundraising in itself takes anywhere between three to six months, right? So try to go raise enough money for yourself instead of going back to the till again and again and again. So you reach out to the VCs. You, you can use that list that I've kind of uh, put on the Metastar Facebook group and make sure you reach out to them only when you have 
those particular metrics. So if you're reaching out to a series A investor, make sure you have the metrics to reach out to a series A investor, right? They will be all the more thankful because you reached out because you have the right metrics instead of, you know, you just spamming these lists. The difference between a VC and an angel is that a VC manages other people's money. With an angel, it's, you know, usually just the angel's money, but a VC manages other people's money. These people are called limited partners, LPs. Now this VC, you know, has a 2% management fee of the entire fund. So, you know, these guys, they want to make really good bets, right? And whenever a startup succeeds, the VC obviously makes money apart from his portfolio making the money. So whenever a startup sells or goes IPO, the VC as well as his LPs end up making money. So the VC is responsible to his LPs to kind of do the due diligence. It's not as easy to convince a VC as it is an angel investor. Now we reach out to this VC and we say, VC, we need a series A round. And the VC says, okay, you know, what are you looking at? What is your pre-money valuation? So we're going to bring those terms back just as we did in the last kind of video, pre-money valuation funding amount post money valuation we're going to come up with price per share and we're going to talk about percentage stake of the vc now i've already told you all the formulas refer to my previous video if you want to know the formula of the price per share and the stake of the vc but we're going to do the math right now so we go to the vc we used to have a 11 crore valuation at the last round now we tell the VC, look, we've, we've got some customers, we've got some early revenues, here are our metrics. We want 10 crores of funding. We want 10 CR of funding, right? We, we go here and we say, VC, give me 10 crores of funding. So the VC says, okay, what is your company worth? Now back in the day, our company was worth 11 CR. Now we have some more metrics. So we say, we go to the VC confidently and we say 20 crores, right? Now let's assume this VC doesn't negotiate. Usually VCs will negotiate hard, but Let's say, you know, he agrees to kind of put, put the pre-money valuation or peg the pre-money valuation at 20 crores. And he says, okay, I'm going to invest 10 crores into this company, right? So we're going to do what we did the last time. We are going to say, we're going to add a new field in our assets. We're going to put in 10 crores here. We want 10 crores of capital. And what do we give the VC in exchange? We give him some shares in the company, right? Now, again, we've got to do the same math. We say we had a pre-money valuation of 20 crores, right? Back in the last round, it used to be 11 crores. You've made nine crores worth of progress. So it's 20 crores now. The post-money valuation is 30 crores, right? Now, again, I want to touch back on this valuation of the company. There is no way you can accurately value a company and say, this is exactly how much it's worth. It's very difficult to do that. So valuation is more of an art than a science. And what I mean by that is when you have a science, you kind of discover things, right? You, you run an experiment, you run maybe four or five experiments, and then one of those experiments is the right answer. Whereas with an art or with arts in general, you already have a predetermined number in your mind and all your working goes towards proving that kind of number. So you're making a proof of something you already believe in, right? You're, you're going with a set mindset. And I've seen the same company get valued five times as much or three times lesser, depending on who's valuing it. There are many methods to do valuations and a lot of them are very questionable in my opinion, right? So uh, we'll talk a little more about this in the, uh, in a future video titled acquisitions and valuations, where I'll talk about my own experience looking at how valuations change depending on who's looking at it. Now we're going to head back to the math. We know that the pre-money valuation is 20 crores. The funding amount is 10 crores, which makes the post-money valuation 30 crores. So we'll change this now. We'll, we'll change this, remove all of this. We'll make it 20 CR. We'll say that the VC has put in 10 CR, which makes the total valuation 30 CR, right? Now the price per share, as I spoke about before, becomes the pre money valuation divided by the total number of shares before the round right which in this case is the pre money valuation which is 20 crores divided by the total number of shares before the round which in this case was about 11000 if i remember correctly which makes it 20 which makes it 20 cr divided by 11,000, which is, this is roughly 18,181 rupees, 0.81 something, but we'll, we'll go with this for now. So this becomes the price of each share after the round. The percentage stake of the VC, which is the investment amount 
divided by the post money valuation which is basically 10 CR divided by the post money which is 30 CR which is 10 CR divided by 30 CR which is roughly 33.33 percent right so the new VC has 33.3 percent of the company and everybody's stake is now recalculated and reduced by 33 percent which means that this angel now goes to 6.06 percent and the co-founders dilute to 60.61 percent right so this is what your final cap table or the equity structure will look like after the investment round after your series a and remember i mean we haven't touched on this in the past in the last video but when you whenever you do a series a or a seed round or whatever you sign something called a term sheet this is like a formal document that that kind of indicates an intent to invest and there are many terms on the term sheet which kind of uh, talk about a lot of the things that we've gone through right now including the pre-money valuation the post-money valuation the funding and all of that so in a future video titled term sheets i'm going to show you what job spires term sheet look like and all the important terms on the term sheet so which are the important terms you should look out for and which of those you can kind of ignore so we're going to do a review of that in a future episode now remember that the angel is obviously very happy with this round you had a board so the angel decides the angel along with you guys decides that you know you just draw, gonna draw this person's mustache it looks like a sad face but whatever so the board decides to kind of go ahead with the round which adds a new person on the board which is the vc now the board starts looking a little bit cramped here sometimes the angel might decide to concede his board seat to the vc the angel might say you know what you know you're a professional vc it's your job to make sure the company does as best as it can so the angel can decide to just leave the board and have just three people on the board which is the vc and the two founders remember your valuation went up from 11 cr to 20 cr only because you added value all of this that you've generated for your company is you adding value into the ecosystem around you there's one more edge case here which is what happens when you have a down round now remember your previous rounds valuation was 11 crores what happens if the new VC who comes in says, hey, I'm only going to invest a couple of crores and I think that your company is valued at 5 crores and not 11 crores. In this case, what happens is that the startup gets devalued. So the value of all of this was actually overvalued at a previous round and it all comes crashing down. So while the equities don't change too much, the price per share drops heavily in this particular case. A lot of angel investors and VCs themselves have clauses in the term sheet called anti-dilution, which kind of prevents them from obtaining a share price lower than their, the share price at which they came in at, right? And this kind of changes their value. So if the investor had say 6.06%, that would go up to adjust for the down run, for whatever down run happens. Now, anti-dilution is one important edge case, which you will have to look out for in your term sheet. And we're going to look through that in our acquisitions and valuations video.